Tonight, residents in the Northeast coming home to heartbreak. It's coming in faster than we can pump it out. This family still waiting to see just what the rushing water left behind. I'm hoping it's the way I left it. My house is still there. Four million people spent another day under flash flood watches. The saturated ground, no match for more rain. We had a guy trapped on a tractor, uh, standing on top of the tractor. Uh, until we got a boat down there and got them out. In Conklin, New York, the governor getting a first-hand look. When you have two, three feet of water come through your home, your life is shattered. In Pennsylvania, a construction worker witnessed a couple getting swept away. When the water came up, of course, it picked them up like a boat. In New Albany, the flood so powerful it pushed the local library onto the street. While in Little Falls, New Jersey, the water has receded. Enough to see the severely damaged foundations of homes. There are people here 32 years that say they've never seen anything like this. Point it happened so quick, you couldn't. The water came up so fast that you could not get out of your house. It was impossible to leave. So we ended up with our camper, with our suburban on our back deck, a boat wedged against the houses. The garage, as you can see, was pretty much demolished. So we lost everything of value. Our appliances, you know, our, I mean, our house was flooded. You know, we had inches of water in our house. Um, the garage, you can see the back wall. I don't know if you can see it's blown out of the garage. The boilers are all shot. So we lost pretty much everything. We lost all our vehicles. Um, you name it. Well, it's been pretty hair raising. I let my friends stay in my trailer over here, which is, um, this was my grandfather's house before he passed. And, and I let my friends stay there because they needed a place to stay. And um, I contacted him at, at, at um, 7 in the morning. I said, Elijah, do you need a ride home from soccer practice? He said, we're not going to soccer. We're on your roof. We can't get to there. I, like, I get a little emotional about this. But um, they're trapped on the trailer. And he had to break open the bedroom window, which was the only way to get out. The, you know, the, the silver lining about the whole thing is there's a lot of paid people driving around down here and that's mostly what they're doing is driving around but yesterday the volunteers that showed up to help out down here and today is incredible that's a nice thing about it all our family's all here helping and then people that obviously aren't our family and they're just here to, to pitch in and help out Dozens of disaster declarations and states of emergency are in effect across New York, New Jersey and Pennsylvania after heavy rain and historic flooding Rushing water destroyed hundreds of homes. This morning, the floodwaters are starting to recede as the cleanup begins. Tony DeCopel is in Hector, New York, with the latest on this story. Waterlogged residents in upstate New York were hit with another round of storms for the third day in a row. Rescue crews spent the day looking for people trapped by rising waters in Seneca County. Just to the south in Montour Falls, floodwaters turned a normally serene view into a violent deluge of rushing water. Hi, car. In the town of Lodi, a sinkhole opened on a roadway while dozens of people were trapped by floodwaters and debris. Have you gone to the other side of the debris? New York Governor Andrew Cuomo toured Lodi and other hard-hit areas Tuesday. He declared a state of emergency in more than a dozen counties. This is a different pitch from Mother Nature and it causes problems in areas that haven't seen it before. Just south of the New York border in Franklin Forks, Pennsylvania, emergency crews were busy rescuing people trapped in their homes. You got it, you got it. Unable to get out in time because the floodwaters rose so quickly. Almost got swept away a couple of times by the water, so kind of see your life flash before your eyes. It's pretty terrifying. In New Jersey, people in the hard-hit town of Brick started the long process of cleaning up and rebuilding. Officials say 85 homes here were flooded. I don't know what we're going to do. I'm going to have to find a new place to live. I don't know. It's really terrible. There are scenes like this all over the region. And this morning, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is saying about 130 additional National Guard troops and some 30 vehicles will be available in the hardest-hit areas. Someone, please come and help them. This is like their whole neighborhood is destroyed. Beautiful homes or beautiful homes are being condemned. People don't even have a place to go. I mean, somebody has to come out and help these people. After a weekend of torrential rain and flash floods, the cleanup was just beginning when it began to rain again. It's terrible. It's 
very depressing. In Little Falls, multiple homes were condemned because floodwaters had washed out foundations. A car was virtually in the basement of this house. The sidewalks littered with dressers, household supplies, books, and lots of garbage bags. Cars were pushed onto front lawns and filled with mud. The lucky ones on this block escaped with just a mess on their hands. And some residents here say there has been no immediate help from local or state agencies. I'm just cleaning out the basement. The water was up to about here. And um, just trying to get rid of everything. We have uh, like a two feet in the first floor plus the the basement. The residents of this block in Little Falls say they have not seen flooding this bad since Hurricane Floyd. In fact, the owner of this house says the water level reached the bottom of his windows in about two minutes. He had to be rescued by boat. Rob Mendoza's home is now uninhabitable. I was sleeping and then I heard some, heard some hissing noise and I started looking around the house and basically see where it was coming. I went down to uh, upstairs, downstairs, then I went to the basement. So a little bit of some water coming in and then all of a sudden I looked at the windows in the basement and they were all uh, mud water. So I rushed out of there. By the time I came up here, I saw my, my truck floating out here and the water was about six feet high. And David and Dana, a state of emergency declared today here in Brick Township. Dozens of families are evacuated because of the flooding behind me. And tonight we got an exclusive look at that damage as some of those families took us along as they went to see what was left of their homes. The first year we moved in, there was a little bit of a flood. Sometimes the wondering is worse than uh, the knowing. But now, this is crazy. That was certainly the case for Jay as we trudged through chest high water to reach his home. My house is right around here with it, right around this bush. What we found wasn't good. <laughs> I don't know. A total loss. His fridge toppled over, floorboards floating like loose tree limbs, and his belongings soaked. Family pictures, everything's here. My mother, my father, my dog. Several doors down, Shannon and Ricky were struggling with a similar reality. I love you. I love you too. This was their first home, bought just a couple months ago. A remodel. <laughs> now all that is ruined. Where's our flashlight, my mom? Earlier in the day, Brick had seen a torrent of water, eight inches of rain in less than four hours. In the Greenbrier community, some residents say the water rushed in quicker than they could get out. I don't really have the words. It means everything, and it's a lot of damage. 80 homes evacuated, some rescued by boat. Tonight, several of those families will stay in an emergency shelter. Others will stay with friends. A brief reprieve before the morning, when they'll have to figure out What's next? I can't give up. Can't give up. That is the roar of flash flood waters near Wilkesbury. The heavy rain caused the creek to bust its banks in Benton, Columbia County. Eyewitnesses say the muddy water quickly rose, flooding out several houses and businesses. Firefighters had to rescue five people. And this was a scene about 60 miles south of Benton in Port Carbon. Some vehicles there partially submerged by those rising waters. Rescue crews use boats and trucks to get people to safety there. Meteorologist Kay Vilo continues to track things for you. She'll join us with your updated forecast, and that's coming up in just a few minutes. And in Upper Darby, Delaware County, cars were submerged by water while some drivers drove through waves up to their bumpers on the cars. Eyewitness News reporter Anita O oh is live nearby Darby Borough now with more on today's flooding and how it's affected that area. Anita. Natasha, what a difference just a few hours can make. Earlier when we were here, this entire area behind me underwater, but you can see that the floodwaters here by the Darby Transportation Center have receded quite a bit. Earlier we watched as first responders rescued pets and neighbors, and you can see why in this video, rushing floodwaters turned this area into more of a river. Darby Borough declaring a state of emergency due to that flooding. This area by Darby Creek still blocked off to any traffic making sure that no one passes through dangerous waters. So far, we're told that 11 people have been displaced, according to the Red Cross. And Mayor Helen Thomas says that officials are prepared for the possibility of more flooding later this evening. The rain was coming down just like in sheets. In Sewickley Township, Westmoreland County, a small bridge over Oak Creek Drive was washed away by torrents of water. 
The heavy rain, which pounded parts of the area late Friday afternoon, left roads and basements flooded and flash flood warnings issued by the National Weather Service. I couldn't keep up with the water. The bridge down there washed out, which never did that in the past, you know. And like I said, it just, it just kept raining and it was just like in sheets. I mean, it just kept coming down and coming down. I mean, really hard. Nearby, just off the West Newton Hermony Road, a normally docile creek overflowed its banks, flooding people's homes and yards. This mobile home was knocked off its foundation. Nobody was hurt. And in South Park, Allegheny County, a section of Cochran Mills Road was shut down because of flooding after a creek called Licks Run overflowed. People who live nearby say the flooding is a constant threat, and they blame it on debris and sediment, which has clogged the creek bed. Right at this point in time, I can't deal with this anymore. I'd like to get out of here. Dave Kaiser owns a house along Licks Run. He says his home is now just an empty building. This would be the sixth time I've been flooded. Um, June 20th is where uh, my house was condemned by the fire department. I had to move out. All my utilities are destroyed in there. I had close to seven feet of water in my basement, and I'm living somewhere else right now. Spread problem and the Red Cross dispatching emergency teams this morning to help nearly 30 people who were forced from their homes after their apartment unit was flooded near Dobson and University. This happened in Tempe, and more flooding created problems for residents there. ABC 15's Megan Thompson live this morning near Southern and Rural inside one of those waterlogged homes. Megan, I can't imagine this is just an awful way to start their Friday. Absolutely the worst way. In fact, the stairway became a waterfall. The streets outside became a river. This is Eric Austin, and he's joining us live this morning inside his home that is now severely damaged. We are so sorry that you're dealing with this right now. Tell me what that was like for you to find your house starting to flood. Well, it's really good to get an hour of sleep and then wake up to a completely flooded street. Uh, as soon as I opened the front door, the water kind of started rushing in, so I immediately closed it, uh, put down some towels, and tried to figure out what I was doing next. I started moving couches, putting everything on the counter, and then quickly realized there was nothing that could be done. Just let the water come in. And what was that feeling like for you when you realized the towels weren't going to cut it anymore? Slightly surreal. I was actually standing by the door mm -hmm. when they broke and it started bubbling in. Wow. Um, I tried to sweep water kind of down into the living room mm -hmm. here to a low spot, and then it started running downstairs on the tri-level, and there was just no stopping it. Some people are seeing their homes flooded for the third time in a month. More than 20 million face flood threats this evening. Heavy rain has already triggered flash flood warnings in parts of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Maryland. Rescue crews today answered several calls for help, including this one, to save a 12-year-old boy outside Philadelphia. In Benton, Pennsylvania, people went to high ground after a swollen creek spilled its banks and ripped through town. Don Daler is about 60 miles south of there. Residents of Pennsylvania were taken by surprise by how fast the water rose today, flooding homes, floating cars, and buckling roads. This dramatic rescue was caught on tape. A 12-year-old trapped on a pile of branches in this stream in Charleston Township, Pennsylvania about 30 miles west of Philadelphia. In central Pennsylvania, rescue crews fielded calls for help by boat. We made our way out here with our boats uh, because they had some areas they couldn't access anymore with their heavy brush trucks. Oh my God. Parts of New Jersey saw extreme flooding over the weekend. These cars floated away from a dealership that sits near a river in Little Falls, about 20 miles west of New York City. And just east of Little Falls, Police had to rescue a bride from a car top in Bogota when she and the groom were stranded on their wedding day. Back in Pennsylvania, the governor says emergency management agencies are working to ensure residents are safely evacuated and get help. But some people are losing patience. Governor Wolf was here. I hope they sees it now. We need help. Earlier today, Mill Creek here at Port Carbon, Pennsylvania, actually reached the first floor of that house. And the very real fear is now with more rain in the forecast, the worst might not be over. There are more storms headed to the northeast tonight after the system already brought deadly flooding in the heartland. Police say a father and son drowned when their vehicle was swept off of a road in Montgomery County, Kansas. Severe flash flooding in Oklahoma City as well. Look at the images. First responders, they're carrying people through water several feet deep to safety. Oh, it's been a nightmare. It was flooded all the way up to the house. 
Torrential rains bring devastation across Seneca County. How residents and crews there are working to keep the community safe this evening. Good afternoon, everyone. John is on assignment. Dozens of people have been rescued and are being told to evacuate along Seneca Lake in the town of Lodi. All this as flooding washes out the roads in that area. Our team coverage begins now with Selena Lewis in Lodi, where a state of emergency is in effect. Selena, the pictures are amazing. I can't imagine what it's like there on the ground. Yes, the pictures are amazing, Maureen. Uh, really incredible what Mother Nature did to Lodi and the surrounding areas this morning. We are here at the Lodi Volunteer Fire Department, uh, who were awoken this morning with severe flooding, five inches of rain in just a couple hours, 200 homes. We're not sure exactly how many people that means, but 200 homes were also evacuated uh, today here in the town of Lodi. Some of those uh, really affected areas, Lodi Point Road, Shaw Road, people had their cars this morning literally washed away. The challenges were that we had a major debris field. We're talking trees, lots of trees that were block blocking the roadway, which made it difficult for us to get in and to get the people out. Now, for the most part, the folks were safe in the residences, but they obviously wanted to get out. Now, there is a curfew in place tonight, put in place by the Seneca County Sheriff to make sure people in those areas, Lodi Point Road, Shaw Road, again, some of the hardest hit areas, um, that crews can get there and help clean up some of that the debris that is still left in place. That curfew is at 7.30 p.m. They will have patrols in the area to make sure that people are staying off the road so that they can get going on that cleanup. Thank you. Governor Cuomo also touring the destruction in Lodi earlier today near Lodi Point. Flood water trees and debris block rows just as Selena mentioned 50 people were trapped at a campground there trucks and boats were brought in to help in the rescue but even they had trouble the fire department went in earlier this morning they are now trapped on the inside because the road became clogged once they entered and when I say clogged, it's not just the water. I'm talking about four or five feet of heavy trees, heavy brush, etc. Crews quickly went to work cleaning out areas that often flood to prevent even more issues later today. Hence, the curfew that we are being told will be in effect. A boil water advisory has been issued for the village of Interlock. And take a look at this. A road just washed away. Officials say the boil water advisory is a precaution because of the flooding. The Seneca County Health Department says it is testing water in the area to confirm whether it's contaminated or not. And as we have seen, that heavy rain weakened the ground, causing roadways to collapse and trees to topple. Emily Noonan witnessed this firsthand today, and she joined us now live in Lodi on Lower Lake Road. Emily? Maureen, thanks to the help of nonstop crews working, the heaviest of waters have gone down. But take a look at the damage it left behind. Notice the mud all the way up against the house, I and mean, you can see a little crab laying down there. But I mean, look at this car. Mud, it's just consumed it along with debris. Here's another car over here that's just been knocked into by the shed that toppled over on top of it. This is just the exterior. Now, a lot of basements are flooded. Roads have been ripped apart, and a lot of cars are just stuck. They can't even get in and out of this area. Now, and though many homeowners have been evacuated, a lot has stayed behind to protect their homes. Mark Van Ostrand has been working since the crack of dawn to divert the water from causing more damage to his home. So he's already facing thousands of dollars in damage to his property. On top of that, he says their power was shut off around 6 a.m. this morning by emergency crews. They are concerned about propane tanks that had been flushed into the lake by the raging water. This is the worst we've been here in 35, 36 years. This is the worst it's ever been by far. It's not only running down the creek, but it's running down the gully. And these streams have been here for how many millions of years? And there's just too much water, too much rain. And as the rain starts back up here, millions remain under those flash flood watches. Meantime, when you take a look at some of these creeks and rivers and you see just how full they are, you can understand why officials say the threat is far from over.